Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Howdy. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday, exactly. Welcome to our show. In this episode, Jill and I talk about buying ranches in high-end markets, uh, one of our favorite topics Yeehaw. at the moment. <laughs> I'm going to go cowgirl on this show. Yeehaw. This is uh, a way to print money. First, yeah. let's take a question posted by one of our members on landacademy.com, our online community. It's free. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're a little excitement there. Just got me all excited. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All right, Matt asked, I have heard or read somewhere that becoming a real estate agent was oh, this, this, oh, this, is, this is good. Let me back up. I'm, I'm, gl- I'm glad. Here. I'm glad this came up. Go ahead. Thank you, Matt. It's a good question. I heard or read somewhere that becoming a real estate agent was somehow detrimental <laughs> to this land investing business. Detrimental. Detrimental. If one takes a real estate test and becomes a licensed agent, how does this affect the business? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start by saying I have gone through all the courses mm-hmm. I have taken and passed the test. Me too. Slash, however, so have I. I never activated my license. So here's here's my, and I think you share this with me, thoughts on this. Talk about a great education. If you really want to learn some great things about this whole business and 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 a lot of good information, take the courses. It was what, I don't know, a couple years ago, it was 600 bucks and 60 hours or 80 hours, I don't remember, 90 hours, something like that. You know, you can do it in weeks or months, you know, whatever. Great, great information to do that. Now, here's the, here's the thing. As a licensed agent, there, it brings a whole bunch of rules and regulations and different things that you have to, um, well, actually the there's an extra cost too. You have to have a broker and you've got to how you hang your license somewhere. Um, and, but there's all kinds of rules and regulations and things that you have to jump through. And is the word notify Jack? I'm trying to think. Notice. Um, notice that you have to do. Extend just, disclosures. But I'll, yes. I'll talk about it in a second. But and here's why we don't need to do this because if if I'm going to be doing this for somebody else and I'm representing that person, that's a whole different ball game. But we're not. I'm acting. I'm buying real estate for me and my company. I'm not representing a third person, so I don't need to do that. So it's all legal and um, and and upfront and honest and 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 when I sell it, it's me selling it to that person so exactly so here's why in the universe you are required to get a real estate license you are required if you represent somebody in the purchase or sale of real property right you're not the purchaser or the seller but you are representing uh the smith family and purchasing a house or you're representing the jones family and selling their house that's why and you're required by law and it's a severe uh, if you do this without a license it's pretty severe that's why you get a real estate license. You are not required to get a license to buy or sell property in any number as the, as the owner or the investor or in a partnership. So what, what do we do here? We buy property for ourselves and we sell it and we do a tons of it every week. You do not need a license to do this. It's a huge misconception um, and I don't know where it comes from. I think that th- this younger generation just thinks you got to get a license, to make, you know, because hairstylists and barbers and stuff have to get licenses. You got to have a license to have a dog. Don't you, Jill? Get a mm-hmm. dog license. Mm-hmm. Everything's licensed this, licensed that. It's very strange mm-hmm. because this is hugely, uh, like I bet you a dollar, you know, Donald Trump and Sam Zell and the high, super high-end guys, they don't have licenses. How do they get away yeah, with Could it? you imagine <laughs> Donald Trump renewing his real estate license? <laughs> Seriously, sitting in a license. class next to him. So and all the guys I know that are high that do, do a high volume of they none of them have licenses. They have do they have access to the MLS? Yeah, through different ways and stuff. So or maybe somebody in their office has it and they use it that way and they pay them. 
Um, you know, that's so that's the real truth of it. You know, and this comes up a lot. I'm really, really glad we haven't talked about it a lot of, very uh, recently on the show at all. Do not get your license. And here's why. Well, first of all, more education is always better. So Jill's right. And I've done this, too. I went through all the classes and stuff and took the test and all of it. Uh, because you learn, you learn all about the state where you're going to be, uh, where you are and every state's different. So learning is great. You know, it's actually, I think when I went through it was four or 500 bucks and man, what a, I mean, for four or $500, which is a pretty small amount of money, the stuff that you learn is amazing. You know, it really changed how we do business in real, in uh, Arizona specifically. I've never done it in California. Have you, Jill? And we probably, oh, you know, yeah, we probably should go. No, through. my mom did. We should you know, go to the school, I've, though, and just maybe learn, because I know the rules are really different. Well, I thought having a, the uh, right attorney next, the real estate attorney next door, would, <laughs> we can ask him anything, which is really what we do. Yeah. I mean, but so, this ties into the what the show's about today is because we're in the process of buying some huge ranches, really expensive ranches, like movie star stuff, and uh, we could learn, you know. Anyway, go ahead. Thing- but, I was going to add to this for Matt is I don't think it's um, detrimental because we do have a number of licensed real estate agents in our world who are doing this. And I now don't don't quote me here. And this is the whole thing you want to double check. You want to make sure when you're buying property in your state, how you have to how or if you need to disclose this. And if you're buying property in other states, how mm-hmm. or if you have to disclose this. So it is absolutely not um, not going to sink the ship. doesn't mean you can't do it. Oh, no, none of that. But you just need to make sure you check the regulations that you are following all the rules. And I, for some reason, and I, that's one thing I think that it's, it's in your state where you're licensed, there's different rules. And if it's not in your state where you're licensed, there's different rules. So um, In Arizona, if you're a licensed agent and you're flipping land like we do, You have to put it everywhere. Everywhere you post a property for sale, you have to say owner is a licensed agent. And there's a bunch of other rules and regs too. And here's a kicker. And uh, I think this is the final point. We'll move on to the show. When you are a licensed real estate agent, it puts you in an entirely different legal category. So if something goes sideways and you get sued and the whole thing kind of blows up, which I'm not trying to scare anybody. It almost never does. Um, I can't even... We've been in trouble two or three times and it's because people are crazy, not because we really did anything wrong and we, we rectified it immediately. But had, mm-hmm. if we were licensed agents, uh, you know, it in the eyes of the law, we are an expert now in the field. It's a little bit ironic because we went through education, we have a license and the whole thing and there's all kinds of recourse and awful stuff that can happen to you. If you get sued as a licensed agent versus just a real estate owner, just a little real estate owner, I don't know anything. Mm-hmm. It's funny because, you know, that is, it's it's ironic. Okay, now here's the inspirational person in me coming out. <laughs> so hold hold on, let me add one more note on this. You could spin this any way you want. I mean, you could spin. I mean, let's assume Matt, you're you are a licensed agent and you do everything by the book, and you are one of the best ones out there. You know, there are a lot of great real estate agents out there who are really good people and and are really doing good stuff so um i'm assuming you're that person and you're going to say hey you know what not only do i know this area because i invest here but actually i am a licensed agent in this real estate agent in this state and i can tell you everything you need to know about it and and so i do properties in this area not just for me but for other people too you know you could spin it that way and it could be a, a positive thing right so thank you. Are you making faces at me? No, not at all. You're all exactly right. right. <laughs> okay. You know, there's pros and cons to all of it, but it, for, in my mind, uh, there's way more cons than pros to being a licensed agent and doing this. Yeah. I don't want to have to jump through those extra hoops. I just want to be able to, it's like, it's like, it's, it's like, I want to buy a car and sell it. Say I bought a car off Craigslist. I drove it for a few months and I want to, I fixed it up and I want to sell it for more, painted it, whatever. I don't want to have to get a car dealership broker license to sell the car back on Craigslist. Right. You know, that's the thing. So. Yeah. There's, I mean, if you're going to flip houses or wholesale houses like we do, Joe, can you imagine if we were licensed agents, the way that we wholesale houses, we mark them up 10 grand and sell them to flippers, the stuff that we would have to disclose. Like every time we talk to a seller, Oh yeah, sure. I'd love to sell your property, Jack. I sell me, sell you my property, Jack. Well, I'm a licensed agent and I, you know, you would have to notify your broker. You'd have to use all the state Uh, contracts that they, they make you use. You're subject to, you know, you and I are famous for doing one page agreements on everything. Right. Purchase agreements, one page, you know, disclosure statement, one page. 
you know, the, the, the regular Arizona or California purchase agreement is like 42 pages. We'd have to do that on every deal. That's it. It's not like we're trying to pull anything past anybody. It's just the extra work that you would be required to go through. Right. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> so I hope that answered the question. It didn't scare anybody because it's really not a big deal. Well, I, I can, mean, it's just, I can hear don't it. go I, get your don't go get your license because you don't you don't need to do that. We don't that it makes it easier if you don't. But if you have it, that's OK. Don't worry about it. I can hear it. iPhone's turning off all over the country. Oh, click, click, <laughs> click. If you have You're a question silly. or you want to be on the show, reach out to either one of us on landacademy.com. Today's topic, buying ranches in high-end markets. This is the meat of the show. Jill, I know you're just itching to talk about this. Go. I am excited just because of where we're going now with this. Uh, and uh, the opportunities that are available uh, in any price range are just, it's staggering to me. I'm, I'm excited. So, and I love what we're doing right now. Um, I don't know how much you want me to share or not share. I think you should share all of it without disclosing the counties. Every last detail. Well, if anybody follows us on Facebook, they know one of the counties. (laughs) Well, yeah, you're right. Go ahead. Share it all. So so like, well, how do I not, how do I keep that a secret? (laughs) Don't go look at Facebook. Don't tie this all together. (laughs) Do not connect the dots in this business we are here we are here to eke out information just as little as much we can and then charge more as we go that's our whole model mark mark that's what we're here to do mark oh my gosh (laughs) oh my goodness hey you know what i'm I'm gonna say this we sell one product land academy this is not our primary business this is a non-profit scenario all right we didn't get into this to make money we make money on real estate deals every week so and we sell one product. There's no fifty thousand dollar product or any of this malarkey that these other places. Uh, we do this to educate people who want to be in real estate, so we can be their partners. So they find deals, mm-hmm. they bring them to us, and we both make money. That's why we're here. There's a disclosure. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it, it you me... just did. A, you just did like a mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> If I sound angry about it, I am because I just hate people getting. A lot of people come to us and say, "I've spent fifty thousand dollars over here. I did. Oh, I went to this Hilton thing, and I had to spend twenty. Di- That's come on. Nothing like that goes on. That's the thing that makes me. If, if you're ever in a situation, not that this, this is a little off topic, but if you're ever in a situation where someone says, "And come to the back of the room," because Jack and I have been in these things. We, can, Jill and I, go to these things incognito just to laugh and test it. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's the funniest thing. And we sit there, we're like, how many people are familiar with it? We don't raise our hand for anything. It's hilarious. Yeah. And I, I'm sure right. they're wondering, who are these people over here in the corner? And then they leave. So yeah. anyway. Why are they gig- um, giggling throughout the whole thing? Oh, That's my gosh. Exactly. We do giggle through the whole thing. <laughs> like, That's great. So, but if you're ever in a situation where they say, you know, and if you really want to do this and da-da, um, come to the back of the room and we'll help you. We could even talk to you about um, how to up your credit limits on your credit oh cards. Oh, my gosh. And da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I just did that thing you hate. But anyway, I think that's the worst thing on the planet. So if you ever find yourself in that situation, run, 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 run. You should be in the situation that people say, like we do, hey, if this isn't right for you, that's okay. If this isn't the right time for you, that's okay. We're not going anywhere. You know, I had a guy even answer his own question the other day. He said, you know what? I get it. If I don't have enough money to do this right now, I need to have money to invest in the data and I need to do mailers and all this. I said, yeah, you're right. So sit tight, get yourself in the situation you need to be in, you know, and then, and we'll be here. Right. That, that's it. Don't, don't go take out a new credit card and we can work this out together. Yeah. No, don't go backwards to go forwards. That's not the right way. So anyway, back to buying ranches in high end markets. Jack. Yeah. You have a lot to say. I do. So there's a few ways to, uh, you know, it's one of the other shows we did this week. We talked about, would you rather do one deal or one, 10 deals or one and make the same amount of money? And my answer at the end was both. You want to do them at the same time. Well, this is that one deal. We are specifically seeking out property. Here's a basic numbers. We talked about it on uh, our weekly call last time, last Thursday with all our members. You know, we're seeking property that's about worth, worth about 20 million bucks. Large ranches like by Neverland, you know, in Santa Barbara County by Michael Jackson's old, old. I guess he still owns it. I don't know. No, no, he sold it. Sold. Property's that size, you know, seven, eight, nine thousand, twelve hundred acres. They're worth 20 million bucks. And we're 
seeking to buy them in the exact same method methodology that we buy 40 acres for four grand uh, in rural markets to buy them for around eight, let's say eight, eight, eight million, and then sell them, sell a $20 million ranch for 10 to somebody who's, you know, then going to really market the heck out of it and uh, make a ton of money. So we're only in it to make between 800 and 1.6 to 2 million bucks per unit. And it's going great. Mm-hmm. That's the end of the show. That's it. <laughs> Talk about dropping the mic. I know. <laughs> We're filming everything, so and it's going to become a whole program and the whole thing. It's this is it's you know Jill is famous for saying, the bigger the airplane, the easier it is to fly because it's got more stuff on board, more electronics, more stuff. So, it's the same thing. The larger the real estate deal, the more people that the more lenders there are, uh, the more partners there are. You know, and true to form, we're not borrowing any money to do this. Well, one of the things I come, what comes up, um, one of the discussions I have with people often is this, that are there really people out there that will let their property go? Are there really people out there that, gosh, have homes without a mortgage and things like that? And, and it sounds crazy because it's not you, but it's really, really true. I remember having a discussion with a woman recently who's in our group and she was trying to help her mom and dad uh, find properties. And she thought it was crazy to be, and this she was doing for, um, homes, single family homes in the area that her parents want to move to. So we were talking about using the data and how to tweak it and, you know, making offers and all that kind of thing. And she's, she's sitting there scratching her head about, God, you mean, can I make these offers? I said, yes. I said, think about this. There's a lot of people right now in that area your parents want to move to, um, that don't have a mortgage. This isn't crazy. And she goes, Oh, you know, you know, you're right. My, my parents don't have a mortgage. I'm like, uh, hello. They're, they're doing the same thing. I mean, that's it. They would be selling their home that has no mortgage to, you know, to buy another asset from somebody else in the same situation. My point is there's a lot of people in areas, especially in California, they got in, in the fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, gosh, even some in the nineties, Jack, and they're still sitting in these homes that they spent a couple hundred thousand for. And, uh, you know, I should look up one of our homes, you know, my family home, it was in Laguna Hills. I'm, I should look it up. Cause I want to say we bought it for a hundred, 200,000 back then in the nineties. I could, it's probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars you know, oh, I bet now, it's worth $1.5 million. Dollars. Yeah. See, right. And there's a lot, I bet some of the neighbors on the street are the same neighbors. You know, if I drove down that street today. Yeah. So people, people have to really, I don't know, it's hard to grasp, but when you really think about it, it's true. So, okay. So these people that you're coming to this home, that's worth 1.2 and you're offering 600,000 when they paid 250 for it. This is a lot of money and you can cash out tomorrow. That's right. It's not crazy. There's a lot of people who sell homes. This, you know, we're not talking about ranches now. It's we're we're shooting off to a little little side note here, but people sell prop houses because they don't want to clean it up to list it. They don't want people in, running through their houses. They'll they'll give up two hundred thousand dollars in a market like that because they don't want to deal with the three or six month process that it takes to sell the property because people are walking through their house and and all that. For lots of reasons, people do that. So, and it's the same thing with land. You know, when mm -hmm. you get it's easy, it's easier. I've done this before. I think this. I think this is Jill's first time. I've done it with high end markets where, you know, it's it's instead of sending a mailer out to buy a piece of property for five thousand bucks, you're sending a mailer out to buy a piece of property for five million. Yeah, it might be worth eight, but if somebody sends you an unsolicited offer for an asset that you own for five million dollars and you haven't even thought about that asset for a lot of years, like Jill's saying. You maybe you bought it for one, you're going to look at that pretty hard. You're not going to throw it away. You're not going to call back mm -hmm. and say, this is ridiculous. It's a lowball offer. You're going to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. It's easier to fly a bigger plane than it is a little, a small one. I use a, I use that, that house example as kind of a baby step. It's a, it's a, it's a, if you can grasp this, okay, now grasp it here. All right. Now I grasp it in that market. Okay. Now grasp it as a ranch, grasp right, it at, right. at the numbers you just said. Now, why is that not the same? And then you kind of go, all right, I get it. I see it, you know? So Here's the, the whole math. thing is not crazy. 50%, this is right from the census. So approximately 50%, it varies. Uh, it varies. 
but 50% of the residences, condos, uh, townhouses, and single family houses are have no mortgage. 50% in the country. And That's it's, huge. It's been like that since uh, since they started tra- tracking the data. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, but it's about 50%. So that means wherever you're sending mailers out, if you're if you are wholesaling houses, half you know you will, um, and you can through the, our data the way we do it. You only, people only ever get more. I'm satisfying this question because it comes to me all the time. Well, that's not very many houses. How many are you missing if you just send it out to people with no mortgages? It's half. You know, if there's four, if there's five thousand units in a zip code that you're interested in, twenty five hundred and have no mortgages, you're going to buy a property. I don't care mm-hmm. how low the offer is. Within reason, you will buy. You will end up with a deal. Mm-hmm. Same mention, with land. You need to deal with people that can make the decisions. If they, if there's a mortgage on it, they're not making the decisions, and I'm not sending it to the bank and dealing with that. Unimproved land, and I'm not talking about property that has sewers to it or subdivision property or infill lots. I'm talking about unimproved rural vacant land or just vacant land anywhere is not financeable through conventional methods. You can't get a mortgage on it like you can on a house. They just don't lend on it. So the percentages are way, way higher. It's in the 90s, in the 90%. Census doesn't track that because it's not a primary residence. But when I look at it, because through liens and things like that, through through lien sources, it's about 90% of the vacant property on this planet, I mean, in, in this country, is not, there's no mortgage on it, including mm-hmm. including huge ranches. Exactly. In fact, banks run from deals like that. So the people that uh, own these things are extremely wealthy and they can, you know, not to mention the tax liability, the annual taxes on a ranch, a 500 acre ranch in Santa Barbara is extraordinary. The the check that you write to have a piece of property that you may not be even be using and a ton of them are not being used is, is a lot. So it's all the more reason to say, hey, you offered five million. What do you say about six? We could get a deal done, and we've got a buyer lined up for ten. And those are the kind of the numbers that we're we're, we're shooting for. We're mm-hmm. just about ready to send the mailer out too. Yep. <laughs> I got the thumbs up. If you have a question or you want to be on the show, oh, sorry. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information. That's me. And inspiration where I'm keeping on task here. <laughs> Track. You're just kidding. <laughs> to get. And just about anything you want. (laughs) You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I got so excited. I got tripped up. I love this topic. I know. It's all good. I'm just teasing you. It's Friday. It's a blast. It's Friday. I love these these large deals. I haven't done it in a while because the economy, but it's back now. Mm. Yes. And and, uh, people are feeling good. Mm -hmm. You know, people are feeling good about spending money. And selling and making changes and and uh, like you said, economy's back. It's it's really good. I'm glad. Me too. I mean, what we didn't probably mention enough in the regular show is that the mechanics are exactly the same. There's nothing different. The only variable, and I say it a million times, is pricing. So you can do this with any asset type as long as it's database driven. It's all variable pricing. So we're offering, you know, in some cases, a hundred thousand dollars an acre. Versus a hundred dollars an acre, you know, like in northern Arizona. Right. What are you gonna do this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Make do my way weekend? to. I'm gonna make my way to Arizona. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's yeah. good. I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna come and check out what you've done with the office and see what I need to undo. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the first time, would it? I'm just kidding. Sometimes I get he mad. He told you that's okay? What? Just kidding. I'm going to no. tell, tell you a true story along these lines. Okay. My uh, The number three child had to wa- took my hand and walked me out of Home Depot yesterday. Cause I was, Why? I what was, were you buying? No, I was oh, about no. to murder somebody. Just oh. a person that was really impatient about the fact that they couldn't pass. Uh, we were standing. It was a crowded aisle. All right. There's a lot of people in there. We were buying some stuff and they were extremely impatient and agitated about the fact that they couldn't pass. And I was not the only person, the only guy that was uh, agitated by this. So he saw it coming and walked me out of there and said, it's not worth it. (laughs) That's what happens in our office. That's my point. I bring it up. I'm like, I get mad and I'm like, all right, we're shutting this program down, this program down, this program down. (laughs) Joe's like, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Exactly. (laughs) Love it. Information. What are you doing this weekend? Oh, um, 
Oh, I'm gonna spend some time with you. It's been like two, three weeks that we haven't even hung out, really hung out, right? Oh, it's I. This we're gonna have some fun. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We are Jack and Jill, and this was the Cash Flow from Land Show. We are the experts at acquiring property of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.